Slow Action is a film about future island utopias posited somewhere in, you know, maybe the next millennia and came out of an idea of island biogeography which was kind of really fascinating to me and, and seemed to continue my own interest in enclosed sort of spaces that develop and grow very much sort of in isolation, I suppose. I decided that I wanted to um, make films about a series of islands which were more about the societies that evolved on them over centuries after a, a kind of fictional idea of the sea levels rising, the archipelagos and islands forming and being cut off from the rest of the world um, and then these new kind of societies, particularly utopias I was interested in. So yeah, what kind of um, societies might develop if they were completely cut off? So I went to Tuvalu, uh, which is in the middle of the Pacific, Gunkanjima, which is in Japan, and Lanzarote. And then the fourth island um, is a fictional island, um, which was shot in Somerset. Somerset is the common name for the largest island at the westward reaches of the proliferation of islands that arose after the fourth great flood epoch. It extends from 51 minutes, 26 seconds to 55 minutes, 21 seconds west by Quinian's compass. So I wanted to try um, working with a writer because I didn't feel like I had the, the tools myself to do that properly. At first I was going to try and cobble together narratives from existing texts, old texts, particularly like various Victorian fictions. I was going to kind of cut them up and reappropriate them. Uh, but then I decided to work with uh, Mark von Schlegel and asked him to write four accounts of four islands and kind of gave him various, various ingredients to put into these texts. So th there's these kind of little um, things that I gave him and then he went away and wrote these things. and. Um, and at the same time, I travelled to three different islands around the world and filmed them without knowing what he was writing exactly, and he didn't know where I was going either. So I wanted there to be a kind of disjunction between what I was filming and what was going to be read over the top. The animation does continue my interest in, in kind of um, movie magic or, you know, the, 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 those kind of film tricks that have been around since Melies, you know, so, um, and I, you know, those things have come and gone in my work throughout making films. These animations, they're quite sort of electronic and a bit Tron-like, but the way that they're put onto film is the same simple superimposition techniques that have been around you know since the beginning of cinema so um, you know I've, I've filmed the scene whatever the landscape um, rewind the film in the camera and then refilm the screen with the animation floating on it and then hopefully it works so I quite like using these archaic tricks the multi-screen thing just seemed to uh, be something that was there almost right from the beginning, I wanted to try it out as, as a way of, um, well, it felt natural because it's about four distinct, discrete places that are, um, you know, floating in the ocean, they're cut off. So in that sense, um, it, it kind of makes sense that they're on four separate screens. The uh, film is shot with 16mm anamorphic, which you could call cinemascope. It's a format that seemed to fit the idea of sci-fi, 
this film is something of a continuation from two other films that I've made, which were also shot in scope, um, which both, to me, are, are kind of post-apocalyptic films. So um, this might form like the end point of a sort of post-apocalyptic cinemascope trilogy. I think it just somehow it, it fits that kind of landscape, um, an idea of an abandoned space where, you know, the human being becomes much sort of smaller and a bit lost. The sound is constructed pretty much the same way that I construct the images. I collect a lot. So in the same way that the images are collected from travels and, you know, somehow collaged together, I, I try and work on the sound at the same time as editing the image. And one of the things I like to do is, like I said before, take things from other films, take sounds from other films, partly because I like the, the kind of uh, the warmth that you get sometimes from pre-recorded sounds. They, they already come with this sort of history, but it's a bit different. This piece has quite a lot of cinematic references for me. There's uh, a lot of sci-fi references, particularly um, lots of post-apocalyptic science fiction that um, I've, I've always been quite a big fan of. And so I re-watched quite a lot of these films, a lot from the 70s, which then I stole bits of sound from, which become part of the kind of collage of the, of the soundtrack. And then there's other films and filmmakers that have influenced it, particularly Herzog and his film Fata Morgana. It's a very strange film that's filmed um, mainly in the Sahara, but also bits are shot in Lanzarote. The soundtrack is mainly narration. It's a very sort of over-the-top, mythical narrative that's being told, kind of really outside of time. And it's spoken by Lotte Eisner, who was a fantastic German film scholar. So I wanted there to be a, a direct reference to that film which is why I asked Ilona Halberstadt to narrate Slow Action. She's also this fantastic film scholar who is roughly the same age as Lottie Eisner when she narrated Fata Morgana. So it's, it, for me, that's, that, that's more of a personal thing. It, you know, it's not necessarily important that other people get that, but that's something for me that there's this kind of bridge between a film that's really important to me and that informed this work. Despite the archaeological complications, the surface still yields signs of past exploitation. Coal is in its veins and crosses to the other islands in the region beneath the sea. We can presume then that Harai's claim of a tunnel world of endless mystery and improbable complication is possible beneath the dead plateaus of the emergence. I spent two years making it, so there's a lot of ingredients in there. Um, um, I think there's a lot of different textures and sounds and um, filmic references, literary references, but um, at the same time, you don't need to know any of those, I don't think. They're not actually important for the viewer, particularly, I don't think, to, to get those references. I think, you know, the idea is that it now becomes its own world. <laughs>